Hey there, and welcome back to a classic, least knowledgeable head-to-head -head video. Over the last few years, Assetto Corsa Competizione has become the de facto leader in GT simulation. It went from being a broken mess of a game in early access to topping the leaderboard in providing an authentic GT3 experience. Race Room Race Experience has been around for a long while. In fact, about as long as ACC's predecessor. Over that time, it's gone through various major overhauls. Being developed on by a small team based in southwestern Sweden, it's been a slow burn for R3E. Renowned for being the pinnacle racing simulator for audiophiles, R3E maintained a strong reputation for having the most immersive car sounds. While its content quality was generally seen as hit and miss, it's maintained a devoted user base over the years. It recently shot into more mainstream popularity with a massive force feedback engine rewrite finally dispensing with the archaic CAN system not tied into the specific physical forces being generated by the car. The new system gave R3E a breath of fresh air and allowed us to finally appreciate many of the physics engine upgrades which were made to the cars under the hood over the last few years. Having compared the two engines back to back, I was completely floored by the sheer amount of improvement. Not only does the new engine tie in better to what is happening with the car, but it does so in a way that's concise and articulate, without any of the superfluous noise or canned forces. It immediately became one of my top force feedback engines in sim racing. Today's test is not particularly fair, so we'll be keeping it very casual. ACC has specialized in modeling a particular series of GT3 cars for years, while R3E has covered a large swath of content. Given how much race room impressed me recently though, I couldn't help but wonder if we put these two head to head using identical cars on identical tracks, how would it stack up in the modern day? We'll be doing the test in the Audi R8 GT3 LMS Evo on the Nürburgring GP circuit. This is to give race room its best possible chance as the Nürburgring, to the best of my knowledge, is the only laser scan circuit in R3E. Moreover, it's based on the same laser scan used for the original Assetto Corsa version, which makes it most likely to be directly comparable to the ACC version. We start in the gold standard, ACC. This sim finally feels connected, allowing you to really push the car without fearing an uncontrollable spin waiting around every corner. As you can see and hear, the audio-visual package is very formidable and the force feedback is very serviceable on a direct drive wheelbase. We break at the 100 board, drop down to first and hook into the hairpin using throttle to rotate the car out. We push aggressively into the sweeping left-hander just before kissing the rev limiter, forcing the car into rotation. This is where the mid-corner sensation of the force feedback really comes into play. We brake aggressively while turning and downshifting in a glorious ballet of coordination in one of the trickiest corners on the Nürburgring GP. We lift before turning right and avoid the bulk of the curb as ACC is very unkind to the car's balance being disrupted by protrusions in the road. So far, we've discovered a number of things. ACC is a very connected driving experience, allowing one to push a car, yet keep it reined in through a combination of its assistive systems, TC and ABS, and raw car control based on force feedback output. Despite its many improvements over the years, ACC is still a touch vague when it comes to mid-corner weight transfer and tire loading, so trying to catch an impending slip or snap can be quite tricky unless you have a lot of prior experience with a given car on a specific track. The track detail is immaculate. Almost all circuits in ACC are laser scanned, and you can feel every element of that with the bumping and rippling of the surface materials. Let's jump into race room. The run you're watching is from the current top leaderboard time in R3E for this track and car. It was critical that I push to my personal limit in order to properly evaluate the behavior of both these sims. As you can immediately see, R3E looks quite dated to the Unreal powered ACC. We accidentally touch the sand on the left as we get onto the final straight, losing us about a tenth starting the lap. R3E, like ACC, is quite brutal when it comes to off-road sand traps. We brake hard just before 100 because in this instance the brakes don't seem as powerful. The car in R3E is kinder to bottoming out than ACC. We push into rotation going left as before and the car behaves very predictably. 
Braking hard while turning, we get a sense of the very progressive nature of Race Room's driving model. A concrete trap on the right curb stops us from yeeting it straight over. So, how do these two differ to this point? Aside from the superficial differences, let's focus on the driving feel. At its base level, not taking into account any assists or systems, the driving experience is more progressive. Something about the car loading and the way that's communicated to you as the driver is more elegant in R3E than it is in ACC. The car movements feel less broken and disconnected and rather part of a unified whole. You can especially feel this when going over rough surface textures as the tyre rubber adheres to the shape of the surface beneath you and you feel the resulting softening, as you might in the real world. 2. Whether it be due to a lack of track detail or other factors, there is a degree of granularity missing from race room. It feels as if the track surface is far smoother, and if the steering isn't loading up with damping or gyroscopic forces, it can feel somewhat lifeless. 3. Race room is far kinder to bottoming out, rough curbing, and going off-road than ACC, as we will continue to witness throughout this run. Back to ACC, we head down the straight, listening to the sound of stones bouncing off the wheel wells. Sonic immersion is one thing both of these sims nail. We straighten up, brake early, and trail brake the car around to the right, using the curb to run off and accelerate toward the hairpin. You have to be careful, because in ACC you can hit this curb too hard and unsettle the car. We brake hard into the hairpin, slightly shooting wide and double apexing. Good exit to the Schumacher S. We lightly mount the curbing to the right, springing into the turn and mounting the inside curbs. Very easy to unsettle the car here if not done right. We go wide and deep, braking and using the inside curbing to create a shallower turning angle as we correct for a snap on the outside. We coast to the right and let the car's gyroscopic momentum rotate us. We tap the curb on the inside, getting an indication from the car that if this was done any more aggressively, it likely would have meant the end of our lap. Meanwhile in race room, we shoot down the straight. Braking at the exact same marker, we trail brake then coast to the left, using R3E's forgiving curbing to ride the inside. Straighten up, brake, then trail brake tightly to the right, running onto the outside curbing hard. Both due to its physics model and track rendering, race room is far more forgiving to using curbing. Braking hard, we double apex the hairpin again, running onto the outside curb. Coming up to Schumacher S, we go aggressively on the curb to the outside, lining us up to smash both inside curbs in the turn. Braking hard and trailing to the left, we fly over both the curb and the grass, pretending the curb was modelled accurately. If we tried this in ACC, it would mean the end of our lap. With Sector 2 concluded, let's take stock of where we are. So far, it's become apparent that you can be far more aggressive on curbing in race room than ACC. ACC is very sensitive to the pitch and balance of the car being disrupted, especially if that involves bottoming out over curbing or grass. As a result, ACC feels more technical to drive and engaging in a manner of trying to get the perfect line, whereas race room feels engaging in a traditional, fun way, where you're being invited to push the car and dance with it at the limit. Back in ACC, we fired down the straight, the granularity and detail of the road surface becoming apparent after race room. Breaking hard at 70, we take the chicane aggressively, partially flying over the concrete traps, a centimetre more to either side and it would have been the end of our lap. We finesse the car around the final hairpin, taking us across the line to a fairly middle of the road 153 lap. Back in race room, we similarly fly down the straight except with a distinct lack of granular detail in this version. We brake hard at 70 again, absolutely yeeting the chicane as we have no death traps to impede our large brass cojones. We finesse the car around the final hairpin again to a near identical time to ACC. Firstly, I have to say this, before we get stuck into any kind of a detailed recap. Driving this car on this track, across both of these sims, was amazing. I loved every second of it. 
Getting acclimated to the driving model in both sims only took about a lap as they drive remarkably similarly after Race Room's force feedback update. You can see by just comparing laps that our brake markers, turn in points, weight transfer shifts, etc., all happened at virtually identical points. The two sims are far more similar than they are different. To say I'm blown away is an understatement. We're blessed to exist in a time where doing something like this is possible. Before we recap, let's take an uninterrupted look at both laps side by side to not only appreciate the driving model of both games, but also their respective industry-leading sounds without my annoying voice over the top. Well, that about says it all, don't you think? Two remarkable simulators in their elements. Still, you're probably wanting some kind of a breakdown between them, especially if you're trying to decide which to buy into for GT driving. Well, fear not, viewer, for I have you covered with my signature load of subjective diatribe and techno babble. Before we get into the driving feel, I have to take a moment to say, as a lifelong sound engineer, how impressed I am to actually prefer the sound of this car in race room to ACC. Never for a moment did I expect this to happen, given ACC and Dirt Rally are renowned as the premier sims for sound quality. The car sounds come across as both having more body and being less artificially post-processed in race room. Similarly, the sound of the gravel pickup bouncing around in the wheel wells has more dimensionality. I'm unsure why Kunoz the sound engineer decided to filter the lower octave from the in-car sounds, but it certainly works to their detriment when compared to the weighty, natural sound of race room. The sound of the downshifts and backfires is just immaculate. Audiogasm aside, on the whole, it has to be restated that both sims drive far more similarly than they do differently. This is a credit to both Sector 3 and Kunoz. Remarkable, really. If we're looking to split hairs, we can say that ACC appears to translate granular detail of the track surface a little better. Whether or not that's due to more track detail existing in their mesh, or the force feedback being more geared towards granularity, is hard to say. The net effect is that ACC just feels more detailed. This also ties into the visual presentation, which of course comes across as a decade fresher than Race Room. Race Room, on the other hand, despite its smoother overall character, comes across as more progressive. The car's limit is communicated more intuitively to the driver, as is the car's behavior on it. If I were to grossly simplify the situation, I would say that I prefer the feeling of the tyre model in race room to that of ACC, at least insofar as to how it communicates to the driver. There's always a distinct feeling that you're on rubber rather than hard plastic, and this becomes obvious every time you yeet over a curb and those sweet tyres conform to the surface beneath you. That said, 
race room is overly forgiving to jumping high curbs and going off the track. The force feedback cues are quite similar between the titles. You can jump between them without much issue at all. The biggest difference I noticed is that the heavy damping force at high speed was more pronounced in race room. This could be partially due to my dynamic damping in ACC being reduced to 50%. This is purely subjective, but from what I know of road driving, the force feedback in race room feels marginally more correct. They've somehow managed to encapsulate only the necessary forces you would get from the column without the excessive bump steer and noise of titles such as R Factor 2 and AMS 2. ACC is just a different flavor of the same minimalist philosophy. If there's one area I would give a distinct edge to race room, it's in its communication of weight transfer and tire loading. This allows one to feel the edge of grip before it's entirely lost, something known to be a bit more vague in ACC. Ultimately, this all boils down to the one question. If you had neither of these two, which would I recommend you get for the ultimate GT3 experience? Well, for the answer to this, we have to circle back to one of the opening statements in this video. This test was crafted specifically to be very kind to race room. The Nürburgring is currently, to the best of my knowledge, the only laser scan track in the sim. As such, it drives remarkably better than almost all of the other tracks. After having driven tracks such as Bathurst, Spa and Brands Hatch, I can say that the track consistency in race room is spotty to say the least. Meanwhile, ACC has almost perfectly laser scanned accuracy in every case. It's remarkable how much of an edge this gives it. Furthermore, ACC's BOP and car consistency is industry leading. Meanwhile, race room struggles to unify the quality level of the vast amounts of very disparate content it offers. While its GT3s are certainly serviceable, and in some cases, absolutely exceptional, the level of consistency you want for competitive racing is often absent. Race Room is a sim that has made a tremendous leap recently and is continually impressing with how it manages to compete at the forefront of sim racing while hampered with an extremely aged DirectX 9 fueled graphics engine. What's more is that once you get into the driving experience and immersed by the amazing sounds, you very quickly forget all about the graphics. That said, if you were to ask me which of these two I would recommend to a newcomer obsessed with GT3 racing, that would still be ACC, without a doubt. The package it brings is just too tight and too good. Its hyper-focus on GT racing has allowed it to get past one of the major pitfalls of traditional sim racing, variable content quality. With ACC, what you see is what you get. All of the cars drive distinctly and amazingly, while all of the tracks, sans Zandvoort, are laser scanned to minuscule detail, allowing you to learn your favorite tracks down to their most distinctive bumps. Does this mean you should give Race Room a complete miss? Not at all. Being a free-to-play title, you can get into it at no cost. Furthermore, you can demo any car in the sim to see whether it's right for you before shelling out any money. It's a very compelling value proposition, so you don't lose anything in at least trying it out. And who knows, you just might find that one magical car and track combination that will make you fall in love with sim racing all over again. Make sure to like and subscribe for future sim racing content, check out our affiliate links and consider becoming a member to support the channel. And until the next one, I'll see you all later.